Law 25. Recreate yourself. Do not accept the roles that society foists on you. Recreate yourself by forging a new identity, one that commands attention and never bores the audience. Be the master of your own image rather than letting others define it for you. Incorporate dramatic devices into your public gestures and actions. Your power will be enhanced and your character will seem larger than life. Law 34. Be royal in your own fashion. Act like a king to be treated like one. The way you carry yourself will often determine how you are treated. In the long run, appearing vulgar or common will make people disrespect you. For a king respects himself and inspires the same sentiment in others. By acting regally and confident of your powers, you make yourself seem destined to wear a crown. One of the laws of power that I have, one that I think is very important, I think it's Law 25, is recreate yourself. The moment people start know who you are, they create your identity. Oh, Robert Greene is this person who writes these dark Machiavellian manipulative books. Then I'm trapped. I'm trapped by their perception of me. And I always have to be like a little dog performing for them, right? And I don't want to fall into that trap. You have to recreate yourself. You have to use your personality and who you are as clay that you are molding. You're like an artist. And so you, you change yourself for each person that's different. So for me, it means I don't write 48 Laws of Power Part 2. I write now a book that's not like the 48 Laws of Power at all. For you, it's doing your podcast, but changing it up. Or maybe you do a different podcast, or maybe you do go into a different career set. Or maybe you become a, a CEO or an entrepreneur in a different direction. That feeling of having no control and how miserable it is, related to that is the feeling that I'm trapped in this role in life that is not of my own choosing. People see me as a writer, a secretary, or whatever, and it's not what I want to be. And that's how everybody judges me, and you feel trapped and you have no power or control. The opposite of that is this feeling that you can be whatever you want. You can recreate yourself. You can suddenly have a different persona. You can change your personality. By the way, one of the actual other laws is you can act like the king already. So in a sense, I, I found mm. those two working together. You can recreate yourself, and the other law was be royal already. So right. maybe that's what you need to recreate yourself into. Completely. You know, the power game is, a, is all about psychology. It's not about money. It's not about who you can push around. It's all about psychology. And it be simple process of transmuting that emotion into some form of activity other than copulation. Sex is one of the greatest of all forces which motivate human beings. Because of this fact, it is also one of the most dangerous forces. If humans would control their sex desires and transmute them into a driving force with which to carry on their occupation, that is, if they spent on their work one half the time they dissipate in pursuit of sex, they would never know poverty. Do I understand you to imply there is a relationship between sex and poverty? Yes, where sex is not under definite control. If allowed to run its natural course, sex will quickly lead one into the habit of drifting. Is there any relationship between sex and leadership? Yes. All great leaders in every walk of life are highly sexed, but they follow the habit of controlling their sex desires, switching them into a driving force behind their occupation. What's good with y'all boys, man? All right, man. All right, today's video is going to be about the power of recreating yourself. Change your ways to level up in the game of life, bro. So, if you guys know me, man, y'all already know that I, my perception of the world as a game. It's no different from a video game. No different from GTA servers. It's no different from uh, picking a character in a Street Fighter game and you pick the strongest character. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't see anything different, right? So, the power of recreating yourself on semen retention especially, right? This goes hand in hand and all. so does all of my videos, but... Let me break down that part for you, right? We are recreating ourselves whether you like to believe it or not. The way you used to view life and the way that you want to change and, you know, level up from watching porn or, you know, uh, abstaining from sex like how I'm on, right? So let's, let's talk about that, right? So that past version of me was addicted to porn about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago now. Um... You know, I've been to about no fap and semen retention and things like that, but it was difficult. It was hard to overcome. It was hard to get over the addiction of porn and overall the addiction of lust, bro. That's a hard thing to come across, right? And come over. And 
especially when you're on retention bro you're literally leveling up if you can man there, there's a saying by he said if you put half of the energy that you put towards chasing women and uh chasing sex towards your goals in your life there won't be such thing as poverty right and i'll probably leave that within this video as well but basically guys you're recreating yourself you're trying to be a better a better version of yourself right and especially on retention you are trying to stay abstain from sex you're trying to get over watching porn all day and beating off three times a day like how i used to be right so in that way you have to already see that you're already hired you see the end goal right for me you can go this can go for money it could go all sorts of things right but for me i see myself coming through with a corvette so it's inevitable i'm going to get, come through with a corvette and you will see you understand what i'm saying so you see the end goal and you prepare for that end goal the way that you do this is by leveling up and trying to do whatever it takes right so for a porn addiction right you're going to try to abstain from sex you're going to try to stop watching porn you're going to do your very best you're going to try to be as busy as you possibly can so that when you come home you don't come home lay in bed and try to jerk off no you just go to sleep repeat and you do that after a while for like a month and boom the porn addiction is gone you break down the plan that you need in order to overcome sex right or or your porn addiction or you know lusting or casual sex whatever it may be for you for me I've been bossed up on the porn shit, right? Like I bossed up from that and I'm able to teach that to you guys. But also now it's like more of the level of lusting and seeing beautiful women and not trying to fuck them. And while they're trying to get me, they're trying to, they're showing me cues. They're coming up to me. They're asking for my number. It's kind of hard to stop. You know, when things are coming naturally, it's hard to stop. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, this goes hand in hand with semen retention, right? And overall my self-improvement channel anyways right so on this channel you come here for knowledge this type of shit this type of game don't nobody know about don't nobody care about abstaining from sex don't nobody give a fuck about semen retention trying to become the best version of themselves so they will suffer but when you come to my channel you're gonna know some game i'm gonna teach you some knowledge right and this is the power of recreating yourself right so for me take past versions of patrick right porn addiction he was um uh, you know addicted to porn he was a video game virgin always on the game i'm talking about playing a game from at least from four to bro 12 hours a day type shit playing video games playing nba 2k playing call of duty all of these games i was the best in not gonna lie to you but it wasn't beneficial within my life and i seen as a hindrance i see that i'm not getting no women i'm seeing i'm not getting no money i see i'm wasting time i see i'm skinny i'm small i'm skinny fat i'm not in the gym using my time wisely like i am now right but this is the past version of me right even when i was in high school i was the uh, the class clown i was always in trouble people see me as a hindrance like literally if you know if i'm feeling a certain type of way i will flame you i'll throw a joke at you and you know not normally random people mostly my friends but if you come out laughing too hard i'm on your ass too you feel me but i was always in trouble i was never doing homework i was always suspended i was always an in school suspension detentions all of this shit i'm not even lying about anything that i say right damn near about to get kicked out of school bro i graduated with what a 0.9 gpa i'm gonna tell you that right now this was all the past version of me and you might even think like how the fuck did he do that bro i paid for summer school and all sorts of things so bro i throughout my four years of high school i ran up like probably at least eighteen hundred dollars worth of um <laughs> of summer school like each class being like 250 so you do the math over four years of how many classes i failed and everything like that but that was that's not patrick anymore you see how i don't even like i can talk about the things from the past that i went through but that's not me anymore i am not a failure i'm not a loser i'm not a video gamer i'm none of this shit i'm not a porn addict none of this shit you see what i'm saying i recreated myself i seen the next version of Patrick that I wanted to be. And he is slowly starting to climb up to that person. You see what I'm saying? It's like taking a step on each tile to this like next level of the person I want to be. I'm getting there. And this person, he's only going to keep growing. So it's a consistent chase. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's a consistent chase. Whether it's in the aspects of business and money, being an, a better entrepreneur, getting more knowledge for you guys, you know, and for myself and becoming a better version. That is my ultimate goal within my life, knowing that I'm on self-improvement forever. This is why I have these channels. I have this channel of giving you information that don't nobody know about. Don't nobody take time to read books. Don't nobody cares about this shit, right? So it's a power of recreating yourself and it's so powerful, right? 
For instance, like I said, I was the class clown. I was always in trouble. Always finding myself in the detention uh, in detention, or the principal's office or they're sending me get, get kicked out of class. Bro, I'm not even lying. Like you would... You wouldn't even believe the shit. Like, like the amount of trouble that I have gotten in, especially in high school, was insane. Like, you would think I should have gotten expelled, but it wasn't like, you know, I fought once in high school too. So I had got like 10 day suspension for that too, as well. But like, suspension every other day, you know what I'm saying? Um, detention every day, but I ain't going to no fucking detention, especially my mindset back then. I was like, man, fuck that shit. I'm not doing that. In school suspension. I was in school suspension at least once a week. If I was in school and I wasn't in OSS, which is called out school out of school suspension, which is just being suspended. But in graduating high school with a one point GPA, thinking that people were smarter than me, thinking that I wasn't really, you know, I was like a menace to society because this is what my mom and my dad and all these people would tell me. You know what I'm saying? Falling in victim into what they think I was. I thought, you know, I always knew I was going to be better and greater, you know, somehow, some way, because I always work hard. Like, especially with sports growing up, I was always training soccer. I was always training basketball. I was always doing what I was supposed to be doing. So I see myself as a higher, higher in those aspects of hard work. But gaining the knowledge that I can put my hard work into to get me better results within this life. That, for instance, I remember playing video games all day, right? Let's say I'm in, uh, what am I? Like, let's say seventh grade, seventh or eighth grade. Peak virgin, Patrick. Peak, peak virgin, getting no bitches, but really being that guy on the video games, but really playing sports too at the same time, but really be on the video games if I wasn't playing sports. You see what I'm saying? But I remember my mom buses in my room, which my room was the living room because I never had a room, you feel me, at this time. So she buses through the curtains. I'm playing the video game. She like, Get off the fucking game. You've been on this game for so long. This, that, and the third. You know how Puerto Rican moms be, man. And, and you know, you become so accustomed to the shit. And uh, she started to take the wire out of the Wi-Fi, bro. That used to blow me, bro. I used to punch holes in the wall because of that, bro. It was crazy. But, like, I'm telling you, peak virgin. Like, loser. Like, that's so fucking lame. But I remember her telling me, like, get off the fucking game. The game is useless. Like, you know, everything like that. Think, telling me the things that I know of. But deep down inside, I didn't want to, you know, escape. I loved video games at the time. And she was like, why don't you pick up a book and read this way more better than way better than playing the video games, right? And I remember just sitting there and looking her dead in her eyes. Like, I'm so over everything. I was so always mad whenever she came in my room because there was always some bull bullshit of her telling me to get off the game and shit like that. But I looked her dead in her eyes and I was like, why would I ever pick up a book if I got video games? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo... There is nothing better than playing these video games in my life. So why the fuck would I ever pick up a book? That's the breakdown. That was my mindset at the time. As a younger kid, I started to look for pathways and leeways to get better because at this time, me and my dad weren't, you know, ever tight. We, he wasn't living with us and shit like that. So I was looking for guidance and I always went through sports. I went through soccer, basketball, boxing, things like that, learning discipline from each sport and things like that. But then I always wanted to become better and become a millionaire and become get more money and, you know, be a better version of myself. Right. So without anybody knowing this knowledge of money and things like that, I'm like, how do I get this knowledge of becoming a millionaire? Right. And I start to watch the greats. I let I made a video on study the greats to become a great. I started to see that in each sport, you have to train like a motherfucker. And I knew this from a kid. So when I'm playing soccer. I'm looking at what Messi did. I was looking at what Ronaldo did, and I got way better than anyone around me in my um, area within my school. I was known as the soccer kid when I was, you know, a kid. So I studied the greats. I started to see what uh, Leah, uh, what Messi did. I, Neymar, my favorite player. I yo, I didn't know this. You just look at the kid, uh, uh, your favorite player, and you watch his highlights. You watch everything he did. His training. Neymar was my number one like I wanted the same haircut as him you know Neymar even to my till this day he's my favorite player forever because that's who I grew up watching and I wanted to play like and be like I wanted to be elusive I wanted to be faster I wanted to be uh stronger and um well he wasn't really strong but just faster and he had all the skills you know he'll do like a rainbow mid game over someone's head or he'll hit everyone with these tricks and I'm like damn and I loved him and so I studied him and the same thing for basketball my favorite player was Carmelo Anthony you cannot bro the thing is my game doesn't even like uh, like come across as Carmelo's because Carmelo's more of a jab step mm, mid-range but bro 
when I played ball, I, I, I played more like Curry slash Dame Lillard till this day. But Carmelo was my favorite player. I was the, I'm the biggest New York Knicks fan in the world. I'm the biggest Knicks fan in the world. I don't care what no one says. Bro, whenever anyone would say anything bad about Carmelo, I would be ready to just spaz on him. I'm like, yo, watch your fucking mouth because that's my man. You feel me? Like, that's my guy. I ride for bro. And this is the time where the Knicks are like fucking 18 and 70. But I'm like, nah, your team trash. Fuck you talking about. But my team is the worst team in the league. But I was ready to stand for him. But I studied the game. I studied basketball. So I wanted to get better at basketball. I seen what my favorite player did. And it was Carmelo. And at this time, he was the top, like, top three in the league and especially playing on my team you know he was, it was bound like yeah that's my guy I watch him every night i remember being a kid you guys don't even understand we were broke we ain't got no money for the uh the rent so you know i remember <laughs> i remember my mom bought me this little uh radio you know what i'm saying the radio and i would search up like what what channel is for the Knicks games and i remember literally just laying down next to the radio every night until we got cable and hearing the Knicks game and just like imagining what is going on. And I remember, I yo, it's so weird that when you are just using your imagination, it's low key better than even watching the game at like at hand. Like, cause the next day, right? I would literally go to school, search up the Knicks highlights. And every time any one of my homies, I'm like in the sixth grade, bro. Anytime one of my friends come into homeroom, right? I'm in the back. Like, ain't nobody watch. I'm watching the next game. I don't give a fuck what, what's going on. Teacher saying, I don't give a fuck. I'm eating my breakfast while watching the next game because that's what I love. I studied basketball. So every time my homies would come into the uh, my uh, my homeroom, they'll be coming right towards me in the back to see what happens if the next one is that the third. I'm like, nah, watch it with me. Come on. Like, you feel me? This is what I did. And every homie who was in my uh, homeroom and shit could vouch for me, bro. It would be like everyone in the back or if everyone's like yo what's patrick doing this that, and the third they knew what i was doing they was like bro he in the back watching the knicks right now fuck is he talking about but that's literally like what 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 it became so i studied the grades i studied everything and i was always looking for guidance i was i wanted to find out which way in my life to go of like you know greater things right so that's why i you know as a kid i used to go to church and my mom would force me to go to church i used to hate going to church now, as I gotten older, this means everything to me. God means everything to me. I look for the good things in my life. How do I gain knowledge about money or discipline or anything like that? You consume the knowledge. You go on YouTube and you watch things that are beneficial for you. I was just watching uh, Andrew Tate's podcast and shit. Amazing things that I learned instead of listening to music and moving like a bot. You know, it depends which life you want to go, right? So I will do whatever it takes to get to the levels of making money, making thousands, making millions. I'll do whatever it takes, no matter how long it takes. You understand what I'm saying? Through perseverance and hard work. That's what I understood because back training, I would be training by myself I, or a couple of my friends. No one wanted to train. No one wanted to run the laps around the big soccer field, but I was doing it. You best believe I was doing it because I wanted to be good. My dream was to become uh, uh, win a world, Mex uh, win a world cup for Mexico. That was that's huge. So you got to put in that work. If Messi did it, if Ronaldo did it, what makes you different? Bitch, you got to work. You know what I'm saying? So um so it's funny how I started to consume the things that I needed to do within my life, going to church, you know, reading uh you know, learning about the gospel, learning about God and literally like everything that I do now is kind of just like I want to learn. Everything, even YouTube. I don't watch like pranksters. I don't watch Netflix. I don't watch any of this shit that the normal average person watches. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching some shit that's going to help me. You know what I'm saying? Napoleon Hill is the author. I lo I've been reading his book. His book is amazing, bro. Y'all got to get that book. It's called the um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Best one of the, That's tied up for one of the best books that I've read. And I'm at like 150 pages now. You know, I, yesterday I read for like two hours straight. It was crazy. But basically... Um, I did what I needed to do to consume knowledge and game. Now I read books. It's crazy how I switched. You feel what I'm saying? I switched. This was the video games or this was the video games. This was the books. I put video games before my books. Now that I really want knowledge and to become better and greater, the best version of myself, you have to read books. This is what Patrick Bed David says. This is what all people say. Cat Williams said he read 3000 books a year. You know how much knowledge that is? You know how much this character of a person is crazy. So 
you switch that out. This is now the video games. Fuck the video games. I don't play that. I don't even have the video game set up, bro. I got it down in my like drawer. I haven't touched that shit in months. I don't give a fuck about that because my personal growth comes before anything. So I changed my perspective of how I view life and how I will view myself. You start to carry yourself like a king. I was a virgin, video game virgin, playing video games all day. I was a loser. I was ugly. I used to have pimples like this all over my face, bro. All over my face. Then I was insecure of myself. I changed my perspective of life. I wanted to move like a king. I wanted to move like the ultimate version of Patrick. So I did just that. I went to the gym. I trained. I Ever since I started working out, I never stopped. Since I was 12, I never stopped. And this is what gave me life. This is what I seen as God's gift to me. I always wanted to train soccer, basketball. When people would be like, damn, we got basketball practice in like middle school and shit. I was so happy to go play basketball. Even if that meant running these suicides and, you know, like, you know, that's like the fucking suckish part of it, uh, of the, um, of the practice when the coach gets mad. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go run, motherfucker. And you do like all of these suicides and shit. People seen that as like boring, but I seen that as fun because I was pushing myself to get to that next level of who I wanted to be. So that meant video games got to go. That means porn has to go. That means uh, uh, anything time and uh, time wasting. That meant all oh, smoking has to go. That meant all of the bullshit has to go. Partying, drunk, dr drinking drugs, all that has to go. Whatever I do, I need to get to the ultimate level of Patrick. So if I'm smoking consistently all day, I was losing weight. I remember I was the biggest stoner in school. I was one. Of, I was in the group of like we would literally walk outside in the hallways, be high as hell. We'd be in class, bro, just flaming each other, just fried, like laughing. The teacher don't even know what the fuck. She don't even know that we're high because like my eyes they just get low, but I'm like consciousness. Like I could play this shit off. Like yo, who high? Like you know, like with a little bit of intimidation or fear or whatever, but. Me and my friends would literally just be high as fucking class, laughing, dying at each other, flaming each other. The teacher come up, we look at, teacher right here, she come up, we both like next to each other laughing. We, we, we gunning each other, you know, we flaming each other. We look at each other at the same fucking moment. We looking at each other. We look up, we see the teacher standing there. We like, boy, if you don't get your lame, yo, we start to flame the teacher like on some shit. On some slang that they don't know about. But yo, it used to be crazy funny. But that was all in the past. You feel me? That's not me no more. I'm not a fucking clown. I'm not a video game virgin. I am not a loser. I recreated myself. I get bitches now. Back then, I didn't get no hoes. Now I get bitches now. Now I get money. Now I hit the gym and I'm stronger. Now I look way better. You see what I'm saying? I took care of myself. But you have to do things in order to get to that level of recreating yourself, right? You have to get away of all of that bullshit, even negative, toxic friends, people who are not on your level. I am becoming more open eyed to this now. And this hurts a lot. It does. It hurts a lot to put away the video games. It hurts a lot to put away the porn. It hurts a lot to put away your friends who you grew up with these people, but they aren't on the same level in you as you or on the pathway of greatness. They don't want to do this. They're smoking weed all day. I have to leave them alone. I have to stay out the way. Not saying I cut these friends off. But, you know, like, I'm not over there. They, they're they they're up north. I'm in, you know, South Jersey. So it's like, I don't even get to see them. But when I do see them, yeah, we'll hang out. Maybe every once in a while, I'll go and smoke some uh, smoke some weed with them on some chill shit. But other than that, that, that hindrance my value and my level of, you know, trying to become the best version of myself. Because this is Patrick at 20. You don't understand this. I see myself as so higher. At 20, I'm already bossed up on half, like... Bro, I'll say like at least 80, 90% of people. So I'm preparing for the killer. So by 25, I expect Patrick to be at a greater level. I don't, I'm not holding myself lowly. You understand what I'm saying? And this is the scariest part about all of this, right? A couple years back, I noticed that like I wasn't getting better within my life. I was in the same situation, still smoking weed all day, every day, two to three blunts a day at least not getting no money even though i'm working a job and i didn't have rent that much rent to pay and all this that and a third you know my life was just going in a downhill spiral and the saddest part is that some people will never get out of this some people will literally stay and smoke weed for the rest of their life 
just okay fine with being a lame this is why i say with this video game shit a lot of people will hate me for this shit but you have to understand i was you because if i was still playing video games for the amount of time that i was back then i will be i wouldn't be patrick till today i will not i will still be a virgin beating off all day you know i had to eliminate the shit i have to eliminate the bad friends the weed the partying the drugs even right now the biggest sacrifice that y'all don't understand bro is the woman i love women i love beautiful women bro i have to sacrifice this shit because my goals mean more than anything this will make you a masculine man this will make you the best version of yourself because like napoleon hill said if you take one half of um of your sexual desires that you put in towards uh, chasing women and, you know, fucking all day, this, that, and the third. If you put that towards your business or your life of your growth, if you want to get stronger in the gym, this, that, and the third. You take that sexual en energy and transmute it towards something of your goals, you will be great. There won't be such thing as poverty. If you take that sexual energy and thinking about women all day and put that energy towards you working on your goals or your business or this, that, and the third, you won't be broke. You won't be poor. So... I have to stay away from women. That is huge. You don't. You might not understand that because you might get no bitches. But when you got beautiful women looking at you, coming up to you, talking to you all the time, it's like, fuck. You know, I could have fucked her. I could fuck her if I want to. You know what I'm saying? But I know who I am. I My goals come before anything. The women are, for me, are just like a reward for my hard work. Me being focused, me being disciplined. They come to you. You have to understand. And I'm going to make my next video. The next video, I promise, is going to be the art of letting everything flow let everything come to you because that's how it goes on retention you have goals that you have to focus on number one goal for me is youtube and the second is my gym so i take care of my health my i pri prioritize it i don't eat the shit the regular bot mcdonald's shit that you guys eat i no dis disrespect to you i don't do that anymore that was the past version of myself i recreated myself i am not the same version of patrick that he once was that is low level patrick he is up to here right now and he has to keep climbing he has to get better fuck this roof i'm going higher than that you know what i'm saying there is it's an endless level of self-improvement and the self-improvement game will never end it will never end you have to see this life shit as a video game just like how i see it in any video game you do not want your character to be trash you do not want him to be weak you don't want him to be a lame in gta you you robbing banks to get this bread you doing all sorts of things crazy shit to get this bread you know what i'm saying so develop the, your character in real life like if you're playing street fighter and you need a strong character. You're not picking the fat, out of shape, disgusting character. Or you're not picking out, like, the skinny guy who doesn't fight or whatever the fuck. You're picking the strong character that can, that will succeed within the fighting game. The, the street fighter, whatever. You have to see yourself as a character. Take it from a third person point of view. See how they view you, right? For a lot of people, they are seen as, like, a joke. As I once was. I was the clown. I was, like... You know, the per the person who's always throwing jokes and this, that, and the third. So from a third person point of view that never met me, they'll just be like, yeah, he's a prankster. He's a clown. You know, he's like, he's like a clown. But Patrick's not no motherfucking clown. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to change the perspective of yourself first that you view yourself. I stopped seeing myself as a vi video game virgin. Was I once was? Yes, I was. But now I'm not that person anymore. I am a king. I am a great. You will address me as as one the woman will respect me everyone will respect me i see myself as higher so everyone must treat me as that and i won't settle for anything else do you understand you have to do what it takes right so for me if i was skinny sk like i was skinny fat like a little child like you know understand and i was insecure in my body you have to hit the gym you got to get stronger you got to take care of your health and your diet and your sleep and your recovery that is boom 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 all right that's one level okay now what's next uh video games get that shit out the way let's pick up some books and let's read let's go for walks let's even even at this point let's talk to women it's better to talk to, i'd rather you spend more time with like women or something than playing video games all of that video game shit is is dead it's just whack because when you get that urge you go and beat off immediately just like how i used to do it I swear, I'll be on the mic with my homies all in the mic. We'll know what we're doing. Like, we all knew what we were doing, right? If my homie was like, man, I got to go take a shit. And he's not back for like 30 minutes to an hour. We knew what you were doing, bro. Like, I remember this one specific friend. He was like, he, the epitome of a, like the video game virgin. Literally, like, 
where we knew what he was doing, but we would, like, crack jokes, like, yeah, he's taking his shit, all right, like, on some funny shit, but we knew he was beating his dick, like, no gay shit, but we knew what he was doing, and the same thing for me, if I was like, all right, bro, I'll hit y'all later, just down the third, I was gonna go beat my dick, like, you know, it's just what it was, so I changed who I was, I have to do what it takes to get me out of this lame level virgin shit, because even to break down a little bit more of the video games, right, video games, it's, it, there's no like self improvement within this shit. It's just not. Maybe if you earn the money from it, okay, cool. But even then, if you're playing video games and you're drinking off all day, you're in the house. You are more antisocial. You're more of what what they call the introverted person. You develop that character. You're not just introverted by nature. Maybe some people are just literally like, uh, you know, more introverted where they want to chill by themselves in the center third, which is fine. But that doesn't mean because you're introverted, you stay in the house all day and you watch video games or you watch TikTok and you you watch Netflix all day. No, Th no, that's where people get the introverted part from. Uh, uh, all fucked up where, nah, I'm just introverted, bro. I just want to chill in the house like, and pl play video games. Like, I like to be alone. Yeah, you could like to be alone, but that doesn't mean you go out you, like you're scared of the world. You're scared to talk to people. That is what video games does. You are not able to communicate in real life. That person who plays video games all day is scared of that girl because I was once one one of those guys. More, more times than not, they're not cold approaching like the chads are. You are the peasant. You are the ant. You're like the deer. And the chad is like the line where he's fearless. No Nobody's, he's not scared of a girl. Why the fuck would he be scared of a girl? What, she's gonna hurt him? You understand? But the chat, but, but the but the deer, the, the, the little virgins are just like, man, she's so beautiful. <laughs> the chat is on his purpose. He cares more about his purpose than the, the woman. So the woman come, they're a reward of his hard work. He's in the gym getting a nice physique, looking really nice. Women will come to you. It depends the person you are. If you're still a video game virgin playing... Of video games but you hit the gym every now and then you get a, a better phys physique that doesn't take the take away from the part where i'm in the house all day i don't know how to communicate the only people i communicate to is over the mic like a little virgin to my friends you, f you see what i'm saying but the chat he goes out he talks he's more um charismatic he goes and talks and have conversation with the old folks or anyone that comes around his way he makes life better so you have to change yourself in how you view yourself but also the last part to this is you have to stand on that. I truly believe I'll be great. So I have to cut off the video games. I don't play video games. I don't smoke weed on my free time. I don't drink beer and or any of this shit. I don't party on my free time. Every, and I'm not saying every once in a while it's not bad, right? Like, for instance, I went up north about three weeks ago, right? And I understand when I go up over there, it throws me off track. Maybe I'll edit a video, make a video or whatever. But more times than not, I'm living more of this, like, going out to party a little bit or going out and smoking some weed and playing some basketball, which is not wrong with playing basketball, but I w I'm not doing my YouTube shit. It brings me down for my YouTube shit. It takes me off of my grind. So that's why I'm not going to go up there maybe even this summer. I don't give a fuck because I'm so locked in. Fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to win. So I understood from going up over there, I will, you know, I have my friend and I stay over and, you know, I stay over at my friend's house and shit. And he has the game and he likes to play it. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, I'll play it a little bit. But even then, we're still, we were doing boxing in the morning. And then we'll eat and then we'll go hit the gym right after. We'll go hit the gym right after and all sorts of things. So we were still grinding. But then at the end of the day, we'll smoke a blunt and play some video games. You see what I'm saying? Like play like some Madden or some shit. Which in my eyes, is like, okay, I'm being lame. And I know it throws me off my tracks. But I'm up here, so I do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I can see, I, I know my weaknesses. I know, and the thing is, I'm, I am I hold myself accountable. If I'm playing video games, I can actually sit here and raise my hand and be like, I'm moving like a lame-ass dude. I'm going against what I preach. I'll go up north maybe once every three, four, five months. Rarely am I up over there with my friends and shit. I don't. I don't go up over there. So, rarely, I, if I play a video game once every five, six months, what does that mean? It doesn't mean nothing. It won't hurt me because I know who I am. I don't have my I don't have my system even set up at home. You feel what I'm saying? If I go out and party one night, that doesn't mean like I'm a full time partier again. If I pick up this blunt and smoke it again once every three, four, five months, I'm not a smoker. I don't smoke. I don't do that anymore. You feel what I'm saying? But every once in a while, it ain't nothing too wrong with it. It's nothing wrong. But I understand that it will level me down. I know that. I truly know that. So for this last part is on your old behaviors, on your old behaviors, you must stand on it. And for instance, like, 
you must stand on what you believe now. I truly believe I'm not a smoker anymore. I don't do, I'm not a video gamer anymore. I once was, I was a lame. Yes, I was a lame. I can tell you when I'm doing some lame shit because I'm a true man. You know what I'm saying? But you have to dismiss all of these old behaviors once you level out of it. Once you are 30 days off of uh, porn and all sorts of things, I, I don't watch porn anymore. That's not what I do. That's fine because you went 30 days without it. I don't, you know, I, I don't watch it in... You know, I don't go back to it and I don't bust unless I'm fucking or whatever the fuck. Um, but I don't do that. You, you, you know, you dismiss your past behaviors and it gives you power to level up on them. So now you'll go 60 days without watching porn. You'll go 90 days without watching porn because I don't do that anymore. That's not what I do. I don't smoke weed. I don't play video games anymore because I don't do that. I haven't picked up a video game in months, bro, since I went back with them. That was the only time I went back up north. Only time I picked up a video game. When I'm out here at home. Bro, it's so interesting that I leveled up from the video game version to now I read books. I used to see video uh, reading books as so lame. It's such like some lame shit that I swipped, I, I swapped them. Like I read books now and back then I'd never, like I used to play video games. I would never pick up a book. It's funny how when you level up, things will go your way. It's crazy how that works, right? And for people who get bullied, right? Or like, you know, they're, they're, they're seen as like the... The, the the clown of the group and everyone like puts him in a nuggie or like you know gives him body shots or like he's like the bitch of the group what you have to do is in order for you to stop being the bitch of your group you have to stand up for yourself you're not that past version of yourself even if it was a day ago i'm not standing for that anymore you'll tell your friends i'm not going for that if you guys want to you know try to put me in a, a headlock or this down a third i'm standing up for myself and i will punch you in your shit right that is standing on the business they put you in the headlock punch them in their fucking face Try it again. Go ahead. Because you don't want to be the bitch of the group anymore. Right? So you stand on it. And now you will be seen as more serious. Oh, what, what got into you, bro? You're so serious. No, I don't want to be the bitch of the group. You don't express it like say, yeah, I don't want to be the bitch of the group. You literally say like, no, I don't like how I'm being treated. I don't like my behaviors. And if that means I, I have to cut you off or if I'm punching you in your shit because you're moving like a bitch. Fuck that. I'm not, I'm not standing for that. I'm not being bullied. I'm not a loser. I'm not a lame. I'm not going for that. So you do stand, you know. And a lot of this comes from, like, you know, being the jokester, you know, the clown, the bitch of the groove is mostly getting flamed on. You know, everyone see, sees him as weak and vulnerable, so they go for him, right? And they'll they'll flame him, they'll grab up on him, they'll put him in the nuggie, this, that, all the, like, bitching him so they can gain power and feel better over themselves. But once you stand on that, you are now equal or even higher than them because, no, bro, you put me in the nuggie, I'm punching you in your shit, you go and try it, go ahead. And even if they're bigger than you and you lose a fight or whatever the fuck... They'll know not to play again. And if they do it again, punch them in their shit again. It, it, once you're able to do that, the respect and all the things you see yourself as high, you're not a clown anymore. You're not the bitch of the group anymore. You have to stand on what you believe, right? So the last thing I want to say, right? I keep saying the last thing, but the last thing I want to say is like another way to recreate yourself is, itself is moving to a different area and moving to like how you want to move and act how you want to act and people will treat you as that right like i said if you get if you're the bitch of the group and you want to change that you start punching on dudes or whatever the fuck not saying to do that but if you have to you have to um they will see you as different and your respect levels will grow up and you won't be seen as that anymore the bitch of the group no they're not going to try it with you right so when you come out like to a new area right so i moved out here about two years ago now it's about to be two years in on may 1st right so when I first moved out here, you know, I understood and I was reading the 48 Laws of Power and this was the law 25 of like recreating yourself. And out here, it's a different life. You know what I'm saying? It's different from the city life of like you having to be on 10 toes at all times now. Like, you know, like you have to like, you know, be ready to fight at all times. You know, out here it's a little bit different, but even then I'm still on that. But literally like, like a lot more nicer things. It's beautiful out here and no one knows you. No one knew who I was. I can be... Bro, I can be a literal mass monster, but I can play the character of the sweetest boy in the world. You understand what I'm saying? I could have killed 20 people. Nobody would have known, but I am I present myself in a way where I'm a, a sweet boy, right? You can do that, right? So if you were a loser or you were the bitch of the group or you, you want to change how that works, if you move to a different area or whatever, nobody knows you. You can choose whatever character you want to play. If you want to play the king, act like a king. Talk less, move with your head held high and your chest up, move like you're confident of yourself, work on yourself and become the best version of yourself and you will be a king. Simple. You understand what I'm saying? And you can change that because don't nobody know you. 
Nobody knows you, bro. You can be a dickhead. You can be a nice guy. You can be a man of God. You can be you can be anything that you think your mind can go about because don't nobody know you out here. Your reputation is now starting to be developed. And out here, I had gotten a, a good reputation because I move like a king, but I also do a lot of hard work and, you know, I'm consistently grinding and people see that. Men see that like, yo, I'm in the gym a lot and I'm there with them. So I met a lot of gym guys that I go for knowledge and we talk a lot and, you know, they're good buddies of mine. And, you know, they're always saying like, yo, and especially when I was first out here, uh, I would hit the Planet Fitness so much that it would be like, you know, I was always there. Everyone, If you went to Planet Fitness, you know my face. That's just what it is. I'm in there five, six times out of the week. If you went, even if you went at 5 a.m. and one night you went at 5 p.m., I was there, motherfucker. You've you seen my face before. So, you know, I used to carry my uh, my, my uh, recorder. What, what's it called? Uh, the tripod. So I would carry my tripod into the gym, and I wouldn't give two fucks. I, no one knew me. Nobody knew me. But then I started to be seen as the influencer guy without even me realizing the shit. I would set up my camera. I don't give a fuck who was there. I'm doing my pull-ups, or I'm doing my bench press, and I would record my workouts. So that reputation that other people see you as, oh, he is now... Oh, he's something of higher. And I didn't expect it for it to be like that. A lot of people see me and they're like, yo, what, what, what do you record on? And I, I would always tell them TikTok because not a lot of people can know this knowledge of the YouTube shit. But a lot of people knew about my YouTube and shit. And I was treating a, like a little bit different. And I was always grinding. I was always posting. And I was always, well, I'm always in the gym and I'm always like recording my videos. So it was like people see me as the influencer or the person who's always in the gym grinding. So they will shake my hand like, yo, bro, like. I kind of earned the respect without trying because I'm in the gym consistently. You see me with a pump. I'm looking big as hell. I'm really working on my form. I'm really working in the gym. I'm not there communicating and just sitting there like the old heads who are talking all day on the gym about the gym and this. No, I'm in there really working. You feel what I'm saying? Like, this is what I do. You know, other people would see me from the gym. Then I'll go to my boxing when I was first out here for like the first three months. I would train boxing over there at my boxing gym. So after a workout, I would go to another workout. Who was doing that? You know what I'm saying? But this is what I do naturally. This is what I do. So I built a good reputation. I go to church every Sunday. So a lot of people from church know me. They see me. They'll see me at work or they'll see me from certain jobs that I work. And, you know, a lot of people will know me. And out here, a lot of people know me for good things. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud that, yeah, people see me as a guy who works so hard and, you know, respects my grind and hustle. I respect, like, I like that. And I earned that just by being me. So you have to see yourself as higher and move accordingly. You have to, you can be anybody you want to be out here. I could have been a mass murderer. I could have been whatever the fuck, but nobody know me. So I can play the sweet, innocent little boy that doesn't do anything wrong and whatever character you want to play, but pick the good character that you want to be. The person who goes through hard work and perseverance and builds his character, builds muscle, looks better, takes care of himself. And your reputation will hold you. People see me as a king. I don't even understand. And uh, this might like actually kind of shock you. But people see me as a king and respect me as one. You don't even understand. They, I will walk around my way with my head held high and my chest up and being so confident in myself that the women love me. The guys respect me and also kind of fear me. But mostly like women like are in awe of me. Like looking at me like, damn, who is that? Like because the king gets that type of attention that's how it works so this is the power of recreating yourself bro this is this was very very i felt so good making this video just now this was really nice so i love you guys bro please make sure to like comment share and subscribe bro and hit that bell notification so that every time i post you get notified bro and bro like the video i i bro i be dropping too much heat. You got to like the video, bro. Come on, man. Y'all got to get me out there, bro. I need this message to be sent to more people. Leave it in the comment section that if uh, you want any type of topics or anything like that, I can cover it. You know, all sorts of things. But I'm going to still be doing my thing on the shit that I know. But if you need uh, any comments of anything that you want me to go over, I can help you go over that. Um, Hit that bell notification so that every time I post, you get notified, bro. And I'm going to leave my last video right here for you guys so that if you want more knowledge and more game, click on this fucking video. It's, it's, too, and it's too much knowledge, bro. Some people can't even uh, comprehend this type of shit. So uh, I love you guys, bro. So stay yourself. Stay 300. Whatever you do in life. Trust me. I believe you, bro.